uh, horses we know so well. This one's the big star in Peritris. Can she win for the second time? And what about Bella Nipotina, who chased her last year and is a Group 1 winner at Mooney Valley over the trip. And Cylinder coming off that new market, the Colt taking on the older mares. That's the William Reed Stakes. All eight stakes, 1400. Might be lovely for him as well. William Reed, he came to Australia from Scotland. He owned Uncle Sam, who won two Caulfield Cups. And in the first year that he won the Caulfield Cup, he ran third in the Melbourne Cup. He was a founding member of Mooney Valley, along with Hiskins, Alistair Clark, and Fian. They're names that we know oh so well. Imperatrice, what about her? Well, she. She's a valley specialist, she's everything specialist, isn't she, Lizzie? But today she's trying to do what only Black Caviar's done amongst mares and win multiple William Reeds. Yeah, back to back uh, in consecutive years. And look, I don't know whether she's going as well as she was in this vision, but I think she doesn't need to be going as well. You can see Bella Nipotine hitting the line uh, strongly, but she's proven. What does that mean? Well, it means that um, she's starting to show signs of um, being a mare, so wanting to go to stud. It happens every... It, it's quite unusual to happen in the autumn. It's mainly a spring time of year. And up here in New South Wales, you can use Regumate to regulate their hormones, whereas you can't use them in Victoria. So, uh, look, it, it can sometimes be a negative, but on other times it uh, can give them a little bit of a gusto, you know, a bit of a spicy mare. Let's see how she goes today. And what about the jockeys today? So let's have a look. Could Opie get so close to that 100? He's uh, got 15 in Australia for Declan Bates. We know he's had this breakout season. Could he get another group one with the astrologers for Harry Coffey? A bit like Declan, he's having the time of his life and could Cuban win an Oakley play? Bo Mertens, of course, the big fall at Stony Creek, coming back and riding for Godolphin. And whatever these three roosters, they've got 50 group ones between them. They haven't got a William Reed. They do look like roosters, don't they? And they've got a great chance as well. They're all on good fillies or mares today. So some of the stories. So let's go into the Counting out for the William Reed Stakes. God, he's a good horse, isn't he? He was 100 to 1 in the new market. He's a beauty. He's probably more of a Flemington specialist and probably better suited at a handicap as opposed to weight for age, where all of a sudden he needs to give weight to the likes of Imperatries. That's what's going to slow him down. And then we get to horse number two, Lizzie in the Inferno. Well, we probably know where he'll be. He'll be back last, smoking his pipe. If they overdo it, you never know. He yeah, could it, flash okay, into it. He could, you know, run into the multiple places, but you think it would be hard for him to run over the top of the these informed horses on speed. It's been a long time since he has won, and that's probably going to be his big negative. What about Q-Man, though? This preparation, he's been an, a revelation, and the connections and uh, Harry Coffey's story is just magical. Well, he's got to be uh, as good as Flamberge was to win an Oakley Plate and a William Reed, but the difference is Flamberge was able to win an Oakley Plate at the top of the weights. This guy won it right down at the bottom of the weight, so it's harder at weight for age. Has Johnny Rocker gone to the wrong gig? Do you reckon he's got the wrong address? Well, Benchmark 78 straight into a group one against one of the best sprinters in the world. All I can say to Johnny and everyone is good luck. Yeah, well, he loves the valley, hey? He does love the valley, <laughs> but so does the next horse love the valley, Imperatrice. What's her record at the valley look like? Well, she's had four starts for four wins. <laughs> so she's done it all. Yeah, she's done it all, and they've been in, uh, you know, incredible races. What a star she is. So... I suppose the only query will be, what does Opie do? What are the tactics for Opie Bossom from the wide barrier? Oh, I'm, I'm going to leave that in Opie's hands because he rode Campionessa pretty well up in that uh, running second. But she, look, she's a terrific mare. She's one that has got so much uh, credit for racing well in Australia. And I'm interested to see that you've got Bella Nipotina as your top selection. You're going Bella against the mare. Well, well, I just think as a betting proposition, this is an each way special, you know, around fixed dollars, around eight. I think she, she's been crying out to get back to Mooney Valley. She's been racing so well, draws a soft barrier and Johnny Allen might be able to kick and just get a little lead Imperatrice. This I mean, is great first up, good at 1,200, second in the Manicata behind Imperatrice. I think she could be very dangerous. I do too. I think this is the horse that could potentially cause a bit of a boil over if Imperatrice is not 100% right. And this is one of Miss Deputant's three yeah. offspring today. Queen of the Ball, she also ran in a golden slipper. And she's going to be watching the telly to watch her little sister, Lady of Camelot, run in the golden slipper in a little while. Uh, visors go on today. You think that she's tested at weight for age. Uh, hypotheticals tested as well for the Freedmans, but one thing about her is... 
she picks herself as the roughie at around $15, $20, Lizzie, because she'll be right in the race. And as always with her, oh, she's right on her toes. Yeah, she's a real sprinter, isn't she? That's what we see a lot from these sprinting mares. They're just ready to get on with it. And this guy, well, he caused what was a, a magical story being able to take out the new market. Great for Bo Mertens as well. Can he do it now at the level weights? That's the big question. Yes, it meets uh, imperatives poorly, but he is a gun cult. Nick, uh, you told us earlier that she's shortened up again, Imperatrice. What price now for the William Reid from Sportsbet? Nick from Sportsbet. Yeah, Bruce, is number six, Bella Nepotina, $7 into $5. She's finishing the Quinella in eight of her nine runs at the Valley. So she's the market mover. This race, does Imperatrice get to Sydney? Does she get to a TJ? We'd all love to see her up here. She's done all her great work in Melbourne. That's the trophy. We'll find out today exactly where she's at. Yeah, if she wins the William Reid, then, you know, considering that would be her third run for the preparation, come up here to the TJ and run at Ramwick in a classic sprint race. The grand final for the autumn would be uh, fantastic to see her here, testing her against the absolute best. Well, Opie Boston says she's the best horse he's ever ridden, and that says so much. She's going for a 10th Group 1 win today. It is rare air. It's a race steeped in history. Comet Court ran a record in this race, a start after running a record in the Melbourne Cup. Here we go. Here's Matt Hill for the William... Field right, looks set, ready, and they're racing. Hugh Man misses the start. The astrologist back with it. Imperatrice jump well. She's about fifth. Hypothetical lead queen of the ball. I am me, Bella Nipatina, followed by Cylinder. Imperatrice is midfield three deep at the moment from Q Man. Then Johnny Rocker, the Inferno, and the astrologist last on the opening turn. Hypothetical is the leader by a length and a quarter. Queen of the ball at the 800 metres. Two further back as I am me outside of Cylinder. Then Bella Nipatina, Q Man, Imperatrice. Imperatrice is three deep, spotting the speed about seven and is forced to go forward now from the Inferno. Well back, Johnny Rocker has the back of the champ and last, the Astrologist. Hypothetical, 500 metres to go, two lengths, queen of the ball, I am me. Then came Cylinder, Imperatrice four off the front, almost three and coming on from Bella Nipatina, Johnny Rocker, Q-Man, the Inferno, the Astrologist. Hypothetical at the 250, comes around the corner from I am me and Imperatrice, the outside, moves up swiftly. Imper Imperatrice goes to the front from Johnny Rocker, Ryan Me hypothetical. Imperatrice, 100 to go. Johnny Rocker bravely giving her a race, but it's the Kiwi wonder. Ten group ones. Imperatrice from Johnny Rocker, Ryan Me Bella Nipatina. The Inferno Q-Man hypothetical cylinder, the astrologist and queen of the ball. It's always two ways of looking at things, aren't there? But let's look at the right. It, um, no, great to see her win and um, yeah, it was uh, looking forward to a beer. <laughs> I can imagine. Talk me through the race shape and, and how things unfolded. You must have been pretty happy with where she was in running. Yeah, yeah got a nice spot and we hadn't had much luck today on the fence so I knew we'd be out 
from the draw, but um, no, it was great to come back from the new market and you know, because that was a tough run and, and show of fighting qualities today was brilliant. Ten Group 1 wins, that's very hard to do, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, she's extremely good and just thankful that she's in the stable and uh, full credit to Ben and the team and all of our staff in New Zealand and everywhere. They, they work so hard and um, a drink. And uh, you get the roar of the crowd as she comes back well to you and all so, so Emily there, so just breaking up at the end. So 16 Group 1s in Australia for Opie, 82 in New Zealand makes a total of 98. I and me got third in the race. Bill and Nipotina just missing out on that place there from the man at the William Reed. So the champ gets a 10th 